At the beginning of the film, two people fight in a car. Inside, Riley North is beating up a thug she's been looking for for some time. She points her gun at him, and then we hear a gunshot. Riley gets out of the car, takes his body, and puts it in the trunk. Then, Riley arrives at a slum where she gets into her truck to clean her wound. Riley opens a box, finds some scout cookies, and has a flashback. Five years earlier, Riley and her daughter Carly came out of a cookie fair. Peg, a wealthy woman and mother of another Girl Scout, argues that Riley stole her parking space. Peg insults her and leaves. Riley takes Carly to her husband, Chris. Today is Carly's birthday party, and she asks him to prepare everything until she gets home from work. Meanwhile, Mickey, Chris's partner, submits a shady business deal to him, which presents many risks. Chris is hesitant, but Mickey keeps telling him that he can give Riley and Carly a better life. Riley comes home late and finds no one coming to his daughter's party. All the kids went to Peg's party, which she purposely organized to overshadow Carly's party. To cheer up the little girl, Riley suggests that they all go to the Christmas Luna Park. Carly is thrilled and Chris promises Riley that he will improve things. Realizing what is at stake, Chris immediately calls Mickey to tell him that he's backing out. Cortez, a gang member, keeps an eye on Chris and as the family leaves, calls his boss, Diego Garcia, who is beating Mickey for stealing his money. Cortez tells him that he has found Chris and is tailing him. Garcia, a gang leader, wants them dead. This should be a solid message to the people trying to cause him trouble. Chris, Riley, and Carly are having fun, taking pictures and enjoying each ride. Then, three goons arrive in a car. Chris and Carly head for the car and the goons start shooting at them. The little girl and her father die on the spot. Riley is hit several times and falls to the ground. She then runs towards them and cries, holding her deceased daughter in her arms. Then, help arrives and takes Riley to the hospital. Detectives Carmichael and Moises arrive on the scene. Riley wakes up in the hospital after a month, and Carmichael visits her. He asks her to identify the three suspects in their custody, or they will be released the next day. Riley learns that Chris was killed because he was planning to steal something from a mafia lord, Diego Garcia. Carmichael tells her that Chris abandoned the idea, but it was too late. He gives her the photos they had together before they were shot. Riley looks at the photos and recalls the memory. The woman can remember the shooters. Riley goes with Carmichael and identifies all three shooters in the car. Detective Moises warns Carmichael and tells him that the last policeman who followed Diego Garcia is still missing. The crazy criminals have hung his badge inside the police headquarters as a warning sign. They realize that Garcia has people infiltrating the police. Moises suggests that they should not go against Garcia if they don't want to die. Later, Riley receives an eviction notice and packs up. He finds Carly's drawings and is moved. At that moment, Henderson, the opposing lawyer, enters the house and tries to convince Riley to drop the charges by offering her money. She tells him to leave immediately. Henderson sees her antipsychotic medication and says that perhaps her memory is foggy and she's not seen things. Riley angrily gives him the money and rejects him. He says he will not get justice and leaves. In court, Henderson continues to question her and makes her confess to being on antipsychotic medicine. The lawyer convinces the court that Riley is delusional and has no truth to her statement. Riley asks her lawyer for help, but the district attorney remains silent and doesn't care. Riley begins to shriek in desperation and Judge Stevens passes the sentence in favor of the defendant. Riley is devastated and argues with the judge, saying they killed her family. In anger, she runs towards them and is hit by an officer. The officer takes Riley away and the judge puts her in a mental health program. Riley is injured and the officers take her to an ambulance. The facility to which she's supposed to be taken is a nightmare. So she immediately hits Carmichael, then runs away. Carmichael and Moises visit her family's cemetery to find some traces and speculate. Returning to the present, the detectives visit a crime scene and find the three hitmen dead, upside down. They realize that the only one capable of this is Riley. Meanwhile, an FBI agent, Lisa Inman, learns that Riley stole some weapons from a gun store two days earlier. Riley, in his hiding place, prepares an inventory. Lisa calls Carmichael and Moises, and they learn 
that Riley robbed $50,000 from the bank where he worked before disappearing. They soon conclude that Riley is preparing to kill those responsible for her family's death. She started with the three assassins on the fifth anniversary of her family's death. Meanwhile, Riley makes it to the house of Justice Stevens. She ties him up and asks him if he remembers her, but he has a long history of corruption and doesn't remember his victims. She picks up a toy in the display and walks out of there. Riley gets on a bus and detonates the bomb, blowing up Stevens' house. Carmichael learns that Riley killed Attorney Henderson, the district attorney the night before, and Judge Stevens by blowing up his house. The news reaches Garcia, and he orders Cortez to put a bounty on Riley's head. Riley destroyed two of their shipments of banned substances in one week. This affects business, and the cartel threatens Garcia. On the bus, Riley meets a young boy and gives him the toy she took from Stevens' house. Noticing that the father is drunk, she follows him to a store. She threatens him with a gun and orders him to stop drinking and take care of his son or she'll kill him. Riley follows Marvin, Garcia's employee, to the pinata store where he launders the cartel's money. She disguises herself as a poor woman and kills two men before entering. The gang identifies her as the newswoman and begins shooting her. Riley kills the gang one by one and goes to Marvin. Then, instead of stealing the money, she burns down the store with all the money. Marvin explains everything to Garcia and he gets outraged. Riley is all over the news and social media advances some theories. Most people are on her side, given what she's dealt with. Lisa and Carmichael investigate the pinata store. The detective cannot believe that Riley did it. He tells Moises that he will try to find information on Garcia's whereabouts. On the other hand, Lisa is curious about Riley since she's been back for three months. Garcia suspects that Marvin told Riley about the lab and kills him. In addition, Garcia sets a trap to get rid of Riley. Lisa and Carmichael go to the crime analysis wing and find her location. Lisa finds a place where the crime rate has been lowest in the last three months. Thus, she suspects that it's the place where Riley is hiding, and Lisa sets out to find her. In the process, Riley enters the warehouse and finds the barbed wire and bombs. Garcia's men wait for his movement to activate the bombs. She realizes it's a trap and runs to a safe spot before the men see her and detonate the bomb. Eventually, they detonate the entire building and leave the place thinking Riley is dead. Riley gets out of the sewage tank and steals a car to chase Garcia's men. She blocks the road and kills them both. Garcia watches the news and learns that Riley is still alive because some guy saw her stealing a car. In the process, Riley manages to reach Garcia's building using his men's truck. Riley sneaks behind the truck and begins to eliminate Garcia's bodyguards. Riley enters the building and goes on a killing spree. When he reaches Garcia, his daughter comes out and she sees Carly and hesitates to shoot. Garcia stabs Riley and escapes with his daughter. The gang leader and his men flee as the police arrive. Riley escapes from there, shows up at Peg's house and punches her. Tying Peg up and cleaning her wounds, Riley teases Peg about her failed marriage and the fact that her husband left her for another woman. Riley steals her car and gets out of there. Lisa calls Carmichael to Skid Row and shows Riley's vehicle. Lisa wants to capture Riley alive and use this information to arrest Garcia and his suppliers. When she realizes someone is tipping off Garcia, Carmichael shoots Lisa. We then learn that it is Carmichael who alerts Garcia. She tells Garcia of her location and he takes all his men to search the slum area for Riley. Riley confronts Garcia's partner, Cortez, and kills him along with his gunman. Riley finds Lisa's body and uses her phone to broadcast it live to the media, exposing Carmichael as a corrupt cop. Thus, she draws police and media attention to the area. Garcia calls Riley using the radio and orders her to get out or he will kill a girl in the neighborhood. Riley surrenders and goes to Garcia. He beats her and she picks up a gun from the ground. At that moment, the police arrive and Garcia kills Carmichael, assuming he ratted her out. Garcia flees, but Riley catches up with him, beats him, and prepares to shoot him. Moises arrives and asks Riley not to shoot, assuring her that Garcia will surely rot in jail this time. But Riley is not convinced, remembering 
how the system failed and turned against her last time. Garcia taunts her by saying she will spend more time in jail than him. So Riley responds that neither of them will go to jail and shoots him in the face. As the police shoot her, Moises orders them to cease fire and Riley escapes. The following day, Moises finds Riley badly wounded on her family's headstone. She asks him to let her die, but he takes her to the hospital. On the news, the police chief declares that Riley North must answer for his crimes. Later, Moises visits Riley while she's in police custody in a hospital, telling her that many, including police officers, agree with her actions. He indirectly supports her, surreptitiously hands her the key to the handcuffs and walks away to allow her to escape. Like and subscribe to watch more videos like this. And don't forget to turn on your notifications. That really helps my channel. Thanks for watching.